Hi, it's Dwyer. DwyerBoxingNews.com for the podcast. Dwyer VIP for sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I get to Des Bryant, let me just point out that Seattle uh, Seahawk wide receiver Paul Richardson has torn his ACL. This is huge. Don't be fooled by his numbers. Understand that this guy had 13 catches over the last three games that the Seahawks played. Understand, too, that this guy is the primary kick returner for the Seattle Seahawks, right? He was averaging 23.5 yards per kickoff return during the regular season. So just from a special teams perspective, this is a big loss. Also, just from a here's who's hot for the postseason perspective, right? Think Trent Richardson's backup for the Indianapolis Colts, right? Think Devontae Adams for the Green Bay Packers. This guy, Paul Richardson, was being showcased now, right? Clearly, he was a better player in weeks 12 through 16 than he was weeks 1 through 11. Keep in mind, too, the Green Bay Packer defense shut down Des Bryant, a Pro Bowl wide receiver. Look at Des Bryant's numbers from the last game. They shut him down. Right, I'm just telling you that if you look at Seattle's wide receivers, they don't have a Des Bryant on that team, and their depth just got a whole lot thinner. A guy who was catching multiple balls on average per week is now out. Right, I'm not saying Seattle loses the game against Green Bay, but I do expect Green Bay to cover. We'll see what happens. Let's talk about Des Bryant. I know a lot of people are screaming this morning. I know you have the Dallas Cowboy owner, Jerry Jones, and the Dallas Cowboy coach, Jason Garrett, all, ups all upset over the fact that they believe Des Bryant caught that pass. You know, understand the rules are pretty clear cut, right? Just think in terms of common sense. If you get your hands on a ball, and then you go to the ground, right? What the rule says in essence is you can't have the ball hit the floor and then have you lose control of it, right? That's the rule in a nutshell, right? The ball can't hit the turf and then you lose control of it, right? If that happens, it's not a catch. Now let me under, you know, let me just say this too. This very scenario happened to Calvin Johnson just a few years ago. He was in the end zone, he caught a ball, right? Looked like he had secured it. But when he fell to the turf, right? The ball actually touched the turf. He actually lost control of the ball for just a minute and it touched the turf. Now, people here analyzing this Des Bryant play are looking at the wrong metrics, right? They're making the argument that, hey, he was in the field of play, right? The rule still applies. The ball can't touch the ground, right? And you lose control of it when it does, right? It can't. So the fact that he's in the field of play doesn't change that. You have some people saying, hey, you know, his arm was on the turf. Shouldn't that have meant that he's down? How could the ball pop out after that? Well, understand, he's still on the way down. Right? The rule is that if the ball hits the turf, 
you know, as he's on the way down trying to establish possession, right? Then if his arm touches the turf, he still hasn't established possession. This isn't a runner whose arm touches the turf and he's down by contact. This is a wide receiver trying to establish possession. This isn't post-possession. This is a guy trying to establish possession. And to do so on a catch where you fall on the floor, you have to make sure the ball doesn't hit the floor and you lose control of it at that moment. Right here, the ball hits the floor and then pops up. This isn't the Bert Emanuel play. It would be different if Des Bryant controlled the ball throughout the process. He didn't. The ball hits the floor and then pops out of his hands. There's a moment there, folks, where the ball, after it hits the floor, is not in Des Bryant's hands. So it's an incomplete pass. You understand passes where you're in the process of falling are incomplete if they hit the floor and you lose possession. You have to maintain control throughout. Now there's the gray area of did he make a football move? Right? Because the rule has an exception. If he catches the ball has possession, then sticks it out to break the plane of the goal line, right? Then, you know, the ball falls out of his hand after he breaks the plane. Okay, that would be a touchdown, right? If he has the ball and then he stiff arms the other guy and pushes the other guy off of him and in the process of doing some football move, the ball pops out, okay, then it's a catch. I don't see any evidence of that on tape, right? Looks to me like his momentum's just carrying him forward, right? He doesn't have a chance to stick the ball across the goal line. He, he doesn't. So I'm not sure if I fully understand what the outcry is about. Immediately before this play, everyone understood that to be legal, a guy catching a ball where he then falls to the turf would have to maintain control of the ball, that the ball couldn't hit the turf then pop out of his hands. We all knew that before the play. Why now, after the play, is it an issue? Right? Did the ball pop out of his hands or not? After hitting the ground. If the answer is yes, it popped out of his hands, then this is a non-catch. Right? Because the ground, you know, while he's trying to establish possession. The ball pops out of his hands. Understand, this is qualitatively different also from the ground can't cause a fumble. That's if you've established possession before you hit the floor. Here the rule is clear. Right? If in the process of making a catch you hit the floor, you have an established possession if the ball pops out. So this is firmly within the rules. I think Jerry Jones is just trying to placate Cowboy fans. It's really um, football team customer relations, right? I think Jason Garrett wants to uh, support Dallas Cowboy Des Bryant, right? It's a more peaceful locker room if everyone's on the same page. It doesn't help if the coach is questioning a player who's going around telling everyone that he caught the ball, right? Des Bryant's a player. 
I'm sure in Dez's mind he had control of the ball. The problem is we can't read his mind. All we see is the ball pop out of his hands and be in midair, right? After a portion of it hits the turf. The play's over at that moment, right? He's trying to establish possession, hits the turf, then pops out of his hands. The play's dead. It's an incomplete pass. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us, gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say, too, I do believe in karma. I thought the Cowboys got some horrific calls the prior week against the Detroit Lions, right? That pass interference play looked like clear pass interference to me. Hall of Famers like Fran Tarkenton have openly talked about how it was clearly pass interference, and I'm guessing Fran Tarkenton has been around the league long enough to know what pass interference looks like, especially since he's a quarterback. Understand, before they reversed last week's call, Mike Pereira said it was pass interference. Let me make a point on Mike Pereira. With the Des Bryant play, before they reversed the Des Bryant play, Mike Pereira on air said he would reverse it because the ball popped out. It was a non-catch. Right? Understand, this rule isn't being, you know, made up after the fact. This was the governing law in this situation. With a playoff game on the line, in my opinion, you cannot deviate from rules that are on the books, right? The referee doesn't have discretion to simply ignore the governing rules. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.